Patricia. Hey, congratulations for Slacks. I know uh, this has been on the film um, festival circuits for quite some time and uh, also on uh, streaming on Shutter. Now it's finally coming out on uh, DVD and Blu-ray and digital. How, how, how does this all feel for you? I mean, it feels amazing. Uh, you know, it's always feels great to finish a film and then have it go on Shutter is just a dream come true. So I'm a total horror geek. So yes, definitely a dream come true. <laughs> well, let's, let's start off with the easy question here, because for people who have seen um, Slacks or going to see Slacks, this is a very, very unique uh, type of horror film. Where, where did this crazy idea came from? Where did this spawn? How did it spawn? You know, it was a very kind of innocently enough, uh, Elsa and I um, were on a road trip, a very long road trip, and we were getting loopy and we were talking about words that we hated. We were with another friend and she kept telling us how much she hated the word slack. So of course, Elsa and I being the mature girls we were, we were slack, slack, slack. So we kept repeating it. And I think we repeated it enough to, till finally we were like, oh, this could be a pair of killer pants. So it just kind of spawned like that. Uh, and then it was in our minds for a little while, just as like a thought. And then we decided to sit down and actually write a draft. And the first draft was honestly horrible. It was a, you know, typical slasher in a high school killing popular girls, really boring, really lame. And so we put it aside for a long time. And then when we picked it up again, I had worked in retail for a few years when I was younger. So we decided to put it in the store and bring in some of that corporate, you know, lingo and that whole idea of the consumer and corporations using consumers and stuff and so it started to shape up and then Elsa saw a documentary on uh, fast fashion and then that was kind of the missing piece and it just all gelled together and and then we were able to write it pretty quickly after that but initially it was just a kind of a silly idea we had. So I'm going to back up the truck a little bit. Your initial idea wasn't about pants or jeans or fashion, but it all spawned just because of a word of a title. Yes, yes, Elsa and I are that crazy, yes. <laughs> and there was no alcohol involved. That's the worst part about it. I can't even tell you <laughs> we were impaired in any way. We just literally thought it was a great idea. <laughs> that's, that's actually pretty funny because, uh, you know, it actually took me a while um, after watching the movie and then I was going, oh, slacks, slacks, you know, that kind of stuff. But, but then, in reality, there wasn't really that connection in the first place. Oh, you're kidding. To me, it's always about that. You know, I feel like that's what everyone probably sees. But it's it's, it's interesting to hear that you didn't really see it that way at first. How oh, interesting. No, I, I didn't see it at first. I, I, I was trying to figure out the, uh, the connection uh, for a while. But anyways, so uh, so so tell us about this uh, clothing clothing retail experience of yours, why, why do you hate it so much? <laughs> I mean, first of all, I mean, if you could see what I'm wearing, I'm like not a fashion person. So at the time, it was the only job I could get. And I it was like my worst nightmare working in a clothing store. I literally wear the same thing. It's like a t-shirt and jeans, like every day of my life all the time. So um, I, I worked in one of those big chains and it was just a crazy lingo. It was just kind of disgusting to be honest like we'd start off the morning with like this is our goal for the day this is how much money we have to make and what we have to repeat to the customers and it was just so much brainwashing and I was there probably way too long to be honest looking <laughs> looking back but it was just kind of the idea that the corporation was pretending to be a really great company that was really awesome and cared about its consumers and really they were just a number and every morning it was like we must make more money than last year we must make more money than last year it was like this mantra that our managers kept harassing us with so yeah I mean it was kind of horrible when I look back and you know luckily I had a few kind of cool people that I worked with but for the most part I mean it was a crazy environment and the managers were kind of like Craig in the movie. Craig is uh, an amalgamation of all these managers I had at my store. And we just took a piece here, a piece there. And that's how we created Craig, the character of that like crazy manager. It, the, the, the funniest thing that I actually found was the employee culture, the love for the co company was like spot on because I actually, I actually know people who worked in these type of retail and they, they do actually work there for like discounts and love, love the fashion. Um, is, is, is that the same experience that you actually had? Yeah, I mean, a lot of what's in Slacks is kind of based on truth. You know, like having those meetings with 
the owner showing up or having these like little parties to get like jazzed about, you know, new, new, um, new stuff. And, you know, I would often stay overnight to, to turn the collection over. All that is true. We were locked in the store. The manager had the only key. Um, and, and so all of that is definitely rooted in reality, believe it or not. And just a lot of the employees too in Slack are just people that I used to know in, in retail, you know, that, you know, hated to be there and just like hated it and loved it at the same time was this weird dichotomy. <laughs> You, you know, you know something new that I never knew is that they actually lock you in. I, I, I didn't think that that's even, uh, like, legal. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to date myself. This is, like, in the late, you know, 1990s, early 2000s. Maybe it was, like, I don't know. But, you know, we, we were in a big mall, and we weren't allowed to go outside the mall during the night. So the manager basically locked us in, and, and that was it. And you were let out at the end of your shift at like six o'clock in the morning. So that's, that's how, and we, you were never allowed to go out into the mall, even though I guess technically we could have, but we weren't allowed. So yeah, I mean, that is based on, on truth, you know. Now, um, I know you can't say, but could you give us a hint? Is this major ch retail change that you used to work is still in existence? Oh, yes. And I think on some other interviews, I've said the name and I'm like, oh, I shouldn't. But yes. Yes. And you know what? I have to say it's I think it's the same for all of them. Right. I don't I don't think there's anyone out there that's really making a difference or really doing anything different. You know, if it's being made abroad, then we know what it means, I think. Right. Unless it's being made in North America. And even then you have to make sure it's, it's done in decent conditions. So I think for the most part, all the big brands are. A little bit guilty. <laughs> so, so when um, when you work with Elsa um, on on um, developing the story, and then you and then finally the production started to kick up, uh, you know, with with the with the production background, with the clothing and everything, did that bring you like memories or nightmares? <laughs> Probably nightmares. You know, creating that store, right? We we found an empty storefront. Uh, and so we had to recreate a story, we had to recreate a brand. And so it did kind of all come back to me. And um, I don't know if you noticed in the movie, but there's walls of t-shirts and walls of sweatshirts that have to be perfectly folded. I mean, that's like a nightmare. Because I remember having those walls and I had to fold with a little folding board. I mean, and it would, I spent three hours folding a shift, you know, like just folding and folding. So I had to kind of go back to that a little bit because we were folding like crazy until the very end. And of course, taping to make it, making sure they never fell. But yeah, it, it definitely brought me back to those days of folding, pretty much just folding. <laughs> now, now, of course, uh, you know, this, this, this movie could have been um, made 20 years ago, 10 years ago or five years ago, but you actually uh, updated it with the uh, social media influence, influencing. Talk about that. Yeah, I mean, that was all Elsa because I'm going to be honest, I'm not hip enough to even know what an influencer was. So she came across an influencer and she called me right away and she's like, guess what? These people exist. I'm like, what are you talking about? And then she <laughs> showed me the video and I was shocked. I, I didn't realize the extent. Like I said, I'm not into fashion. I'm not into anything like that. So I had no idea the amount of power some of these people hold. And it's pretty crazy. So we knew right away we had to have a character like that in the script. I mean, it was obvious. And of course, you know, the pants want their revenge on this person. <laughs> <laughs> and, and for yourself, I know you mentioned at the beginning of the interview that you have a love for horror. What is about horror that uh, this just drew, drew you? Because I, I understand your last script was also a horror. Yeah, I pretty much just do horror. Uh, that's what I like. But you know, I, I think when I was a child, I just liked being scared because I got into horror very young. You know, I mean, my parents, for better or for worse, they kind of let me watch whatever I wanted. So I was, you know, eight, nine years old watching all sorts of horror films. They they didn't care. And I think back then I just loved being scared. It just, you know, and I was scared. I would watch it scared and then go to sleep scared. But I just, I liked that idea. And then obviously as I grew up and I saw some, some more horror that was just really great, you know, in terms of style, in terms of, you know, themes and stuff, I just kind of kept loving it. You know, sure, there's some stuff that sucks, but there's a lot of stuff that's just Fantastic. So is there, uh, is there more um, down in the pipeline of, um, after slacks, but possibly like a scarf that goes around uh, suffocating people or, 
or a pair of socks that kills people? What, what What's next? I mean, for me, I think I'm done with clothes, but I definitely think there's a lot more to be said. So if people get inspired by other inanimate objects, by all means, um, I think my stuff now, I just like um, exploring different things, right? So I have a vampire project with Elsa, I have a poltergeist one, and then I have a bunch of other kind of slasher type uh, stuff. But I just like to keep it interesting and and always in horror. I'm going to be honest. That's my thing. That's what I like to watch. I consume horror and whether it's music, whether it's books, whether it's films, TV series. So that's that's where I'm comfortable. Most excellent. Well, hey, Patricia, hey, thank you uh, for speaking to us about uh, your uh, your horror movie, uh, Slacks. It is a quite an un- enjoyable film, and it's quite different from, er- from anything a lot of people have seen. Great. Thank you so much. This was a lot of fun, and uh, I'm glad you liked the film. It's always great to meet people that, that liked it, because, you know, it's kind of hit or miss. You know, you either love the killer pants or you don't. <laughs> that's 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 true well hopefully we'll get to speak next time on your next movie amazing thank you have a good day thank you bye